Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can take the integration between Cubase and any Mac controller to another level. Things like moving the faders, panning works pretty well, but things like controlling plugins and channel strip, for example, using the Xtouch is not easy to do. Let me show an example. Let's say I want to tweak this SSL channel here. I have to press the plugin button, rotate this knob here until I see the, the plugin name. So it's on the slot 6, as you can see here. And now I go to the page button to start tweaking the plugin. The problem is that I cannot see the plugin window. So I have to manually click on the edit button to open the window. It's too much work to do to control a plugin here. So it's easier to just click on edit button and tweak with the mouse. Another problem is channel strip. Let's say I want to add a saturation here. I have to press the channel strip button, rotate this knob until I see set. Now I choose the saturation type I want. Let's say I want a tube saturation, for example. Now I have to press page to start tweaking. Again, it's too much work. Another small thing that I don't like when I'm mixing is, let's say, this is channel 1 here and channel 16 here, and you can see on the screen. If I go to the next bank page, which should be from 17 to 32, it's from 9 to 24. I don't know why, but Cubase has a bank size of 8 instead of 16. So I have to press it twice to see from 17 to 32. But to see this channel on the Cubase Mix console, you have to select the channel, so Cubase will scroll to this channel. Let's say I want to go back to my first page. I just press back down, but I don't see those faders on screen. So I have to press select to scroll to that page. What I want to improve here is every time I click here, it will click twice for me and select the last channel. And every time I click here, it will click twice and select the first channel. So to start this project, we have two options here. This one, which is Max and is a commercial tool. And if you don't have Max, you can download the trial and open the patch. But even after the trial ends, you can still open the patch. You just cannot save the patch. So you can use Max if you want. Or we can use the ugly brother of Max, which is Peary Data. Uh, they work exactly the same. I made the same patch on both. But there are some small differences here because Peary Data has some other objects, but the, the functionality is exactly the same. So if you don't have Max, you can use the Peary Data version. Be aware that you have to use the, the same inputs and outputs that I'm using here. So go to MIDI Preferences and set your main unit to port 1, your extender to port 2, and your third device to port 3, and your outputs to your virtual MIDI ports here, that I will explain later how to create those ports. So the idea here is to send information from this unit to Max and Max to Cubase. The same with the extender. The information goes from here to Max and Max to Cubase. To do that, we have to create virtual MIDI ports, and those ports are created here on Audio MIDI Setup, and go to Show MIDI Studio, IAC Driver, which creates virtual MIDI ports. You activate here, and create three buses. And now, in Cubase, we go to Studio Setup, Mac Control 1, which is my main unit, and select the IAC Bus 1, and Mac Control 2, which is my extender, we change it to IAC Bus 2. Now in Max, you have to go here in MIDI Setup and select your Xtouch unit to port B, your extender unit to port C, and your third device as port D. I'll talk later about this third device here. In the output session, you see that IAC Bus 1 is called B, IAC bus 2 is called C and IAC bus 3 is called D. So everything you see here with a B is sending information to Cubase pretending to be the Xtouch main unit. And everything you see with a C, like this one here, 
is sending information to Cubase, pretending to be this extended unit here. If you are using Windows, Windows doesn't have a native solution to create virtual MIDI boards. So you have to use this application called Loop MIDI and create three ports. They will work the same as the IAC on Mac. Some Windows drivers are not multi-client, which means that you cannot use the same device as input in Cubase and Macs at the same time. Later in this video, you will see that we need to set up Xtouch as the input here of this generic remote 2. And you cannot use this one because this one is already being used on Macs. So you have to create another virtual MIDI port here. And in Macs, you will see that I'm forwarding all MIDI data from port B to port E. And you have to set up this port E to be the virtual MIDI port that Cubase is receiving on the generic remote. If you are using pure data, you, you can see that we have the same workaround here. And port one, which is the main unit, is being sent to port four. And port four is the, the port that Cubase is receiving on the generic remote. Here in pure data, you have to make this link to make it work. Because if the link is made before you set up the MIDI ports here, let's say you don't have any selection here, peer data may crash. That's why you have to make this link after selecting the MIDI ports. Be sure to set your patch to edit mode to make those links. From now on, Mac and Windows are exactly the same. Just be aware that every time that I talk IAC driver on Mac, it's the loop mid driver on Windows and just that. Now that all configuration is done, we can start working on our patch here. So the Mac control protocol is just MIDI information. It's note on MIDI, MIDI CC data, pitch band here. Every key here is sending MIDI note information. There's a tool called MIDI monitor that can see everything that's going in and out from a specific MIDI port. So for example, let's say I click here on the select button. You see that there is a note on message on channel one, note 24 with velocity 127. So as you can see, all the keys I press here generates a mid note. So let's see how Max works. Uh, it can generate mid note the same way as the x touch can. So let's see those buttons here. What are the notes here? You can see that there is a note 47 and here you can see 46. So let's create a note 47 on the main unit, which is port B. So if I click this button here in Max, it's the same thing that if I click this button here on the X touch. So let's see the solo button, for example, it's note eight. So if you want to emulate the solo button from Max, let's go here change to 8 and boom you have solo if you change here to port C which is the extender unit when I press the button you have the solo on the extender unit now let's have some fun here making Max work for us in this area here what I'm telling to Max is every time you see a note 46 coming from the input B which is this button here create another note 46 for me also, I'm asking Max to wait 20 milliseconds and generate a note 24 on the output C, which is the extender unit. So what is the note 24? It's the select button of the first channel. So every time I hit this key, it will select the channel for me. And every time Max receives a note 47, it will generate again another 47 and we'll generate a note 31 on port B, which is the main unit. And 31 is the select button of the last channel. Now in Cubase, the screen scrolls when I press bank up or bank down. And now I have a bank size of 16 channels instead of eight. And this solves our first problem. By the way, we have here this 41 and 42, which is the send and the panning buttons. So what this section does is every time I press send button, it also presses the flip button for me. 
because when I use the scent and they are not flipped, I have to activate the scent here and set the amount I want here. So I have to activate here and the amount here. Activate here and the amount here. But I prefer using the faders to do that instead of the knobs. So I flip, activate the scents, and now I set the amount I want. And every time I click pan, it will flip again to make the panning on the knobs instead of the faders. The faders are now the volume. And when I hit send, the faders are now for the scents. And the 40 is this button here. So every time I click here, it will unflip if it's flipped and we'll go directly to page four, which is the game page, because I never use the page one, two, or three. So that's it for this blue section here. Now let's go to this yellow section here, and here is when things get fun. So in this area here, what I'm telling Max is, is that everything that's coming from this extender unit goes directly to Cubase, so Max is not doing anything on the extender unit. But on port B, which is the main unit, I'm telling Max that every information that is a note goes to this object here. If the mid note is not one of those numbers here, pass this note to Cubase directly. But if I press one of those notes here, Cubase will not receive that information. So let's use our friend again to find out what are those notes here. So every encoder here can be pressed. So if I press this encoder, it will send mid note information. 32, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Cubase will not respond to those keys, but Max will. So every time I click on 33, which is this encoder here, it will send the information to this button to create a note 43. And mid note 43 is the plugin page button. So every time this button is pressed, either by me or Max, you see that the X touch goes to the plugin page. Let's say I click it on the third encoder, which is 34. It will send the information to go to plugin page, which is mid note 43. Let's go to the plugin page. And now it's sending that number two to this object here, telling to rotate this first knob, which is control 16, value one, two times, one, two. As you can see here, when I rotate this knob to the right, you see mid CC 16, value one, and 65 to the left. So every time I rotate to the right, it's mid CC 16, value one, and to the left, value 65, and after rotating this first knob, you just create a note 49. And note 49 is the page button here. And now I'm ready to tweak the third plugin. Uh, let's see in Cubase. I have all those plugins here. And when I press here, which is the first slot, I'm ready to add the first plugin, which is the captator. So it's here ready to be tweaked. If I press the second button here, I'm ready to tweak the CLH way, which is my second plugin. If I press the third encoder here, I will add it my third plugin, which is VBC. But I still have a small problem here because I have to click the edit button to see the plugin window. To solve this problem, I created a generic remote with the Xdodge input. So it's receiving directly from the Xdodge unit and not from Max. And here we can tell to Cubase what to do when receiving information from 32, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the first encoder is opening the edit window of the first plugin. The second encoder is opening the edit window of the second plugin. The third encoder, the third plugin, and so on. So every time I click here, it will open the first plugin window because we told Generic Remote to do that. And the X touch will change to the correct page here as if I was clicking and selecting the correct page for each plugin. So let's say I want to edit this decapitator. It's here ready to be tweaked. And when I'm done, I just click the first button to close the plugin. 
So let's say I want to add the VBC, which is the third slot. I will click here. It will open the plugin window. I tweak whatever I want. And then when I'm done, I just click the third button again to close the window. So let's say I want to edit the SSL channel, which is the slot six. I just have to press this knob and tweak the plugin the way I want. And when I'm done, just click the knob again to close the window. So let's say I want to tweak the CLA guitars. Uh, some plugins that have uh, faders, I like to map the faders to match my console. So in this case, I map the first fader to my first fader and the last fader to my last fader. In this case, it makes more sense to tweak this plugin using the faders instead of the knobs. Now let's go to this right area here. This area is where we control the wheel, this wheel here. So what I'm telling to Max here is that every control that's coming from this unit here that is not 60 forward this common two cubase. As you can see here, when I rotate to the right, you see that there is a MIDI control 60, value 1, and to the left, 60, value 65. But Cubase is not receiving this information. What Cubase is receiving are those information here. Note on, 127 and 126. Max is generating these notes here. So every time Max sees a control 60 and a value 65, it will generate a mid note 126. But if I press this button here, which is the scrub button, it will create a note 124 instead of 126. The same goes to the right here. If I go to the right without the button, it's note 127. If I press the button, it's 125, as you can see here. So it's 126, and if I press the button, it's 124. Same thing to the right. If I rotate right, it's 127, and if I press, 125. And in Cubase, you have to create another generic remote and set the input to IAC bus 3, which is the port D here in Max. And here, I can select what I want to do with node 126, 127, 124, and 125. Here, what I'm doing is, without the button pressed, I'm going one bar to the right and one bar to the left. And if I press the button, I'm going one beat to the right and one beat to the left. You can do anything you want here. For example, you can change the fading time, the fade out time. You can, here I have, for example, the clip gain. You just need to select the clip and boom, you have clip gain on the wheel. For example, I have a macro that moves my cursor one frame to the left or one frame to the right and grabs the event like this. So every time I press the scrub button, I call this macro. So it works like that. Now let's talk about this section here. This area is for controlling this unit here. This is a Steinberg CMC controller, but if you don't have this unit, I made a Touch OSC template that has exactly the same MIDI information from the unit. So if I press this button here, it's the same as this button here, this button is the same as this one, and this, this, and so on. And you can use either one, so it's up to you. So this unit is sending mid notes to Cubase, as you can see here, note in and note out. And we are using the same generic remote 3 that we use it for the wheel and make some actions based on those mid notes here. Very simple stuff. So if it receives note 43, it will do this. If it receives note 40, it will do that and so on. So I've set up this for my monitor button. Monto B here, Monto A, stereo to mono here, and here I can have my control room volume. But there is nothing on generic remote with those notes here. Those numbers are those keys here. 16, 8, 120, 
and zero. And one is for the fifth button that I don't have on the controller, but I have here on the iPad. The iPad is more complete. What I'm telling to Max here is basically the same idea that we had on the, on the plugin window here. So here, what I'm telling Max is, let's say, for example, that I'm clicking here on the third button here, which is the 120. So I'm telling to create a note 45, which is the note that activates the channel strip page here on the console, as you can see. I click here and it goes to the channel strip page. And after that, it will rotate the first knob, control 16, three times. One, two, three. And we are on the tools page. And after that, it will rotate the third knob, which is control 18, one time to the right, because it's value one. And after two seconds here, if shift is pressed, it will create a note 49, which is the page button, the same way that we did on the plugin page. If shift is not pressed, just wait 30 milliseconds to create the note 49. But why do I have to wait two seconds? Because if I'm loading a plugin, let me do here manually for you. So if I rotate this knob right, you see that it takes some time to the plugin to load. So this time is the two seconds that we have to wait before pressing the page button. So if I'm not pressing shift, it means that I want to edit the strip and not to add. If I want to add a noise gate, for example, I just have to press shift here and the first button, which is the noise gate button. And after two seconds, it will press the page button to access the edit page for the strip. If I press shift, and the second button, it will add a compressor, wait two seconds and go to the edit page. So let's see this in Cubase. So here, if I press shift and the first button, it will add a noise gate. If I press shift and the second button, it will add a compressor. If I press it again, it will go to the next compressor type, which is the tube compressor. And again, to go to the vintage compressor. So shift and the third button will add the first tool, which is a deesser, and shift and the fourth button will go to saturation and will add the first saturation. And if I press again, the next saturation type. But if I want to just edit a strip, I just have to press one of those buttons here. So let's say I want to edit the compressor. I just press the second button and start tweaking. Let's say I want to tweak the saturation. I just click here, the last button, and start tweaking the saturation module. Now let's tweak the noise gate. Just press here, the first button, and start tweaking the gate. So if you press one of those keys without the shift, it's to add the strip. But if you press shift, it's to add a strip plugin or to change to the next type. I also added a bypass button, which is this one here. So if I press this button and the first here, it will bypass the noise gate. As you can see here, it's off now. And if I press again, it's on, off, on, off. The same thing here with the compressor. Just press bypass, on, off, on, off, on. Same thing with the tools. Just press here and bypass it. Same thing with saturation. Just press and bypass. Cubase has a bug that it doesn't show on the interface if the plugin is bypassed or not. If you bypass it using the Mackie controller, it should grade out like this, but it doesn't. So that's it for this video, and I hope that you liked the idea of making the controller do the hard job for you. So selecting the correct page of a plugin or the correct channel strip module. And if you are not a Cubase user, I think you can take the same idea to your DAW. So just take a time to understand how Max works and how I made this patch and modify it to make it work for you like this one is working for me.
Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. Bye bye.